I'm, I'm Fernando Ferrer, and um, for at least a moment, I'm uh, I'm chairing this committee, and uh, I'm very proud to have uh, Judy Griffiths, a longtime uh, uh, trustee, as uh, as vice chair and and a longtime friend. And perhaps we can go around and introduce other uh, trustees and. Um, um, Members of the Chancellor? The I Chancellor, know? yes, it sounds very Vatican y. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But, All know, right, so I'm Ginger Waters and I'm Vice Chancellor for Human Resources Management. Rick Schaefer, General Counsel. I'm Marcia Keyes, I'm President at York College. Ken Sunshine, Trustee. Jill O'Donnell Tormey, Trustee. Rita DiMartino, Trustee. Kathleen Barker faculty member from Medgar-Evers College and vice chair of UFS. Down here. Um, Doris Wang and Hulik Masolian, trustee staff. Okay. Meeting's called to order. Uh, approval of the minutes of June 6, 2016. I presume people have seen them. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? The Aye. minutes are approved. Uh, Vice Chancellor Waters will present items on the policy calendar. Thank you, uh, Trustee Ferrer. Um, item 1B1 is amendment to Article 6 of the bylaws. This resolution is asking the board to create three new instructional staff titles, Clinical Professor Medical Series, CLIP Instructor, and CUNY Start Instructor. These titles were agreed to in the 2010-2017 Professional Staff Congress CUNY Collective Bargaining Agreement that was approved by the board this past June and recently ratified by the union. The Clinical Professor Medical Series title was negotiated in order to support the CUNY School of Medicine. The CLIP Instructor and CUNY Start Instructor titles were negotiated in order to create full-time teaching titles to support those two CUNY educational programs. According to the provisions of the collective bargaining agreement, all three titles became effective with the start of the fall 2016 semester. Normally, notice of a proposed bylaw amendment is presented at the meeting preceding the one at which the amendment is voted upon. However, because of the timing of the contract's approval and in order to make these titles available for use as soon as possible, I am asking the board to waive notice. Mr. Chair, I present item 1B1 for the committee's consideration. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, is there any comment or discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next item. The next item is item 1B2, titles or duties excluded from the agreement with the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY. Negotiations with the PSC CUNY have long established that certain university employees holding instructional staff titles that would otherwise be covered by the collective bargaining agreement are excluded from coverage by virtue of the confidential policy or managerial responsibilities of their positions or functions. This resolution before you is consistent with actions adopted following board approval of previous collective bargaining agreements. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I present item 1B2 for the committee's consideration. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any uh, comment or discussion on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. The item passes. Uh, and I'd like to ask uh, Deputy Dean Erica Friedman to present item 1B3. So this is a request for an amendment to the governance plan of the CUNY School of Medicine. Um, Resolved that the proposed amendment to the governance plan of the CUNY School of Medicine be adopted effective September 8th, 2016. The explanation is this proposed amendment would modify Section 3.2B and Section 5.1 of our governance plan, removing the designation of the chair of the Department of Clinical Medicine as an ex officio member of the School of Medicine's Executive Committee and Personnel and Budget Committee, respectively. The chair of the Department of Clinical Medicine is responsible for providing overall leadership and oversight to the department and its faculty, including exercising responsibility over the recruitment of faculty with appropriate expertise to meet the educational needs of the medical education curriculum 
and the evaluation of its faculty in relation to reappointment. Accordingly, it's appropriate <coughs> that the chair of the Department of Clinical Medicine have both voice and vote on academic matters and personnel matters. A lack of voting privileges by the chair of clinical medicine department is a departure from the practice of other academic departments of the CUNY School of Medicine and that of other medical schools. The proposed amendment to the governance plan was approved by the CUNY School of Medicine on June 17, 2016, and is recommended by its team. Is there a motion to approve? Question. How long is that? Um, That we're trying to remove been in force. Uh, we just actually changed our governance plan when the school became officially the CUNY School of Medicine, and in error, we so did not put this in. So this is just an amendment to the recently approved governance plan, which was approved in the last six months by the Board of Trustees. Yes. What is unique about this amendment, however, and, need, and everyone should be aware of it, is that the, direct, the department head of clinical practice is a non-employee of CUNY who will be making decisions about appointment, reappointment, tenure, and promotion. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the agreement. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further question or discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. I ask uh, President uh, Mitchell Wallerstein to present items 1B, 4, and 5. Good afternoon. Mr. President, nice to see you all. So uh, the first item that I'm presenting is the uh, item uh, 1B4, which is the naming of the Paul H. Uh, Chuk Department of Information Systems and Statistics within the Zicklin School of Business. Uh, and this uh, uh, happy situation comes about as a result of a uh, generous bequest of $2.5 million uh, to the Brew College from uh, Mr. Chuk uh, upon his death in 2014. Uh, Paul H. Chuk graduated from Brew College in 1949 and uh, was also an <coughs> alumnus of Columbia University's Graduate School of Business. Uh, and he taught undergraduate and graduate courses in statist statistical methods and analysis at Baruch over a period of 12 years. Uh, he later went on to have a uh, successful professional career and uh, uh, as I said, upon his death, uh, we learned that there was a generous bequest, and we felt that the, me the best use of that, those funds would be to name the department in his, in his honor and in his memory. Okay. And can we have the uh, second item? Yes. <clears throat> the second item is the naming of the Miriam and Charles Tannenbaum classroom. Uh, this is uh, uh, as a result of a gift of $100,000 from uh, Helen Mills and Gary Tannenbaum, uh, a couple who have been very supportive of Baruch College. Uh, Mr. Tannenbaum is himself a, a graduate of Baruch, and his wife uh, is actually uh, uh, has a graduate uh, <coughs> the graduate work at the college, and uh, currently sits on our foundation board, and is very active. And uh, they have named uh, agreed to name a classroom uh, uh, in honor of Mr. Tannenbaum's parents. There a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion or question on these uh, two items? On, may I ask a question? Is uh, is this the first gift from the Tannenbaum family? Uh, I believe it is not the first gift, actually. So they, they've given money they have. before? They have. Yes. And uh, is there a way of being advised of how much they have given so that might uh, be a, they might think it's just more than a classroom, so to speak. Yeah, no, I mean, we can certainly provide that information. Okay. Uh, it, this is this gift is part of. Uh, and what week. have they done before? Which yeah, I mean they've done do. they've supported other other right. programs That's at the, the college. Right. We I have mean, a program that we, names classrooms, right. and this, this is a gift they've given right. for that purpose. The reason why I'm being a pest and asking questions, I understand we're supposed to be interviewed by consultants about branding and the like. It would be interesting to know about all of those who have supported this institution in the totality of their support. Well, we certainly have records of that for, for Baruch. Right. Okay. Sure. 
Are we ready for a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The items pass. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to alter the uh, agenda for just a moment and ask uh, Senior Vice Chancellor Schaefer to present uh, an information item. Uh, item 2A on your agenda. Thank you. I've got to leave in a few minutes for the executive committee meeting across the hall, so I just <coughs> wanted to take care of this before I left. So uh, for those of you who are new, um, we have a computer use policy at CUNY, and among the items that it deals with um, is the monitoring of uh, the use of computers. Uh, it provides that uh, the employees' use of uh, computers at CUNY are not routinely monitored, um, but that there are certain circumstances uh, where they might be monitored, and among those in particular um, are, um, so they fall into two categories. There are three categories that have to do with just the technical use of the computer, where the computer services people might have to go in to try to figure out why there's a glitch or why this appears to be an overuse. Um, and there are sort of three categories like that. And then there are four categories that fall into how shall I call it, sort of a more investigative uh, situation uh, where it's reasonably determined, uh, necessary to monitor where there's a risk of liability or where there's an investigation or a lawsuit going on where you need to, to gather uh, discovery uh, in, in connection, uh, where there's a reasonable basis to think that federal or state or local law has been violated. Uh, and then a catch-all as otherwise required by law, such as when CUNY gets a subpoena uh, in, a, in a lawsuit and we have to go in and, and gather uh, the emails within a particular category. In, in these uh, latter areas, what I'm calling the sort of quasi-investigative area, um, there is a procedure that must be followed. Uh, the ultimate approval at any campus must be by the president uh, after consultation with the general counsel. And then the um, policy goes on to provide that I will give this committee an annual report, uh, basically a statistical report without any identifying information on the number of instances uh, where there has been uh, computer monitoring. And um, the number of instances is really quite modest. This year, this past year it was 12, other years it's been 10, 8. It sort of falls within this ballpark from year to year. Um, and you have before you um, that annual report which lists uh, a little bit of information about each instance to show uh, that we are quite uh, uh, vigilantly complying uh, with the uh, terms of the computer use policy. Um, and so I'm, I present it to you, and if you have questions about it, I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay. Are there any There's questions or comments on that? Yes. Is this just informational? It's just for information. Yeah. Okay. And where is uh, uh, this uh, recorded other than for somebody to, to list to see what all the policies are, including this one. Well, I thought you might ask that, so I have copies of the policy, the handout, and um, along with all of CUNY's policies, uh, you can find them in uh, two places. One on the web page, the CUNY web page, if you click about and then go down to trustees and you click on trustees, one of the side panels says, the Manual of General Policy. The Manual of General Policy is just a compilation of all of the policies that are currently in effect that the board has passed. So if you go to the Manual of General Policy, either using the index or there's a search function, you just put in computers, computer use, you would come up with this. So that's one way to find this and other policies. And the other way to do it uh, is to go to the CUNY website, about, and then instead of clicking on trustees, click on administration and get to my webpage, the Office of Legal Affairs, 
and I have a button on my, well, it's not even a button, it's actually laid out so that all of the policies that are least relevant to me are listed. There are a few that aren't, and you can probably find them on Ginger's webpage uh, relating to some HR matters. Um, but anyway, those are the two places you can find it, either under the trustees tab or under the administration tab. And the, and the public has uh, access. To All of this is completely so open to totally the public. Totally transparent. Totally transparent. Public document. You don't need any password to get into the system, at least this part of the system. Okay, thank you all. Okay. I'll go back to the uh, agenda. And I'll ask Senior Vice President Joseph Giovanelli to present item 1B6. Before we do that, <clears throat> however, on uh, many of these things, we'll be changing the format of their presentation going forward uh, at, uh, at meetings. So uh, just want to uh, give you a heads up on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Brooklyn College respectfully requests that the Board of Trustees of CUNY approve the naming of the Robert M. Glassman 1948 Lecture Hall at Brooklyn College. Mr. Glassman was a Brooklyn native and a graduate of New Utrecht and Brooklyn College. In memory of his love of Brooklyn College, Mrs. Gla Mr. Glassman's <coughs> wife, Sandra, has pledged $1 million to establish the Robert M. Glassman 48 Fund, which will support presidential scholarships and Macaulay Honors Opportunity Fund awards at the college. After graduating from the college, Mr. Glassman uh, established a children's apparel company, mm -hmm. Kenilworth Sportswear, which he successfully grew from a one-person operation to an organization with national distribution of more than 350 employees. Bob remained president of the company until his retirement in 2006. His wife, Sandra Nee Gottesman, is also a Brooklyn College alumnus who graduated in 1956. Bob and Sandra were partners in the business for life for more than 60 years and had three children and four grandchildren. Bob passed away on August 4th, 2014, at the age of 87. In recognition of this generous gift, the college has identified uh, a lecture hall, which is in the process of being renovated, so it will be new and shiny, located at 320 Whitehead Hall as a site to name in memory of Mr. Glassman. Therefore, the college requests approval of the CUNY Board of Trustees to name this classroom the Robert M. Glassman 48 Lecture Hall. Do I have a motion and second? So moved. Any questions or comments on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Items approved. Thank you. I'll ask President Lisa Cueco to present item 1B7. Good evening and thank you. City College of, how are you, Judah? Good to see you. How are you? I'm well, thank Good. you. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, City College of New York requests that the Board of Trustees uh, approve the naming of the Stuart Z. Katz Endowed Professorship in the Division of Humanities and Arts at City College. <clears throat> in August 2016, Stuart Katz donated $1 million to establish the professorship to support outstanding faculty in the Division of Humanities and Arts at City College. It was an outright donation of appreciated stock. The gift will be administered through the City College Fund. Stuart C. Katz graduated from City College in 1964 with a bachelor's in political science. He was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest and one of the most selective academic honor societies in the nation. He earned his JD from NYU, University, NYU Law School in 1968 and pursued a career as an attorney. He has been a partner for most of his career at Freed, Frank, Harris, Shriver, and Jacobson, and now serves as counsel to the firm. In 2009, Katz became an adjunct professor at NYU Law School, where he teaches a course on mergers and acquisitions. In addition to his professional accomplishments, since 2011, he's been a member of the Leadership Council at the Friedman Brain Institute at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. In recognition of his great generosity, the college respectfully requests that the board approve the naming of the Stuart Z. Katz Endowed Professorship in the Division of Humanities and Arts at the City College of New York. Is there a motion and second? So moved. Um, any questions or comments on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 I can pass this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You too. I'll ask uh, President Jennifer Rabb to present items 1B, 8, 9, and 10. Thank you so much. 
Good evening. Um, our first request to the board is to name a new dance studio, uh, the Jody, after Jody Gottfried Arnhold, um, who has been one of the major supporters of dance and dance education at Hunter College. Hunter recently created the first freestanding dance department within CUNY, and are very is, we are very committed to um, supporting the arts. Jody Gottfried <coughs> has already contributed over $2.2 million to create a dance education program. And this is her most recent gift of a half a million dollars to renovate one of the major, uh, create a major dance studio for that graduate education program. Uh, the reason we're calling it the Jody is it matches a recent gift for the same amount of money um, that we're calling the Peggy, after Peggy Churchwell, who many of you know is a long, just celebrated her 50th anniversary as a Jody employee. And her brother Dick Gilder named the Peggy after her, so Jody decided to call her studio the Jody. So uh, we respectfully request that um, this uh, studio be named the Jody and the money will be used as a capital improvement. Please continue because we're going to vote yeah. on the music. Right. Uh, okay. The, um, the next um, item is um, <coughs> a wonderful uh, new program named after someone <coughs> that I know many of you remember as one of the great New Yorkers, Ted Keel. Um, Ted Keel, originally about 12, 15 years ago, created a Center for Sustainability at CUNY, which was housed at Hunter with a million dollar <coughs> gift. Um, Hunter and our geography faculty created a close relationship with the Keel family, and after Ted's passing, we've been working to create another position uh, in Ted's honor. Um, and the family has uh, given, provided a gift of $450,000, which they asked to be used to create the Ted Keel Visiting Fellow in Transportation Policy. The fellow will be based at our Roosevelt House Public Policy Institute and will focus on Ted's love of urban transportation and a balanced transportation system. The fellow will teach, work with faculty, work with students, uh, create research to promote balanced transportation and do public programming and student engagement. Um, and the gift was from the foundation of which the two children are the officers. Um, and as I said, the gift was for $450,000 for a visiting fellow. And our, the final gift that we request for, uh, moving, uh, naming approval for is the Elise Tepper Visiting Education Fellow. This gift of $300,000 um, from an alum, Elise Tepper, um, a 1956 graduate of Hunter College, and her husband will also be used to create a visiting fellow practitioner in residence for our education school. The fellow similarly will teach, do research, help develop curricular, student placements, and otherwise enhance our school of education. Um, and this gift is for $300,000. May I have a motion and second? Motion. So moved. Uh, are there any uh, questions or comments on this? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, then items 8, 9, and 10 are approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to ask Vice Chancellor Waters to uh, present uh, item 11 and at the very same time ask uh, your indulgence while I uh, impose on uh, Vice Chairman Gribbets to take the rest of the meeting to its conclusion. Item 1B11 is the appointment of Linda T. Chin as Commissioner of the City University of New York Civil Service Commissioner, Commission. The CUNY Civil Service Commission was established in 1988. It oversees all civil service operations for the university and administers provisions in the New York State Education Law and CUNY rules and regulations regarding the civil service. The commission enforces rules covering classification of CUNY civil service employees, acts as guardian of the merit system for classified staff, it also hears cases of individuals and managerial titles because the, that group of employees is not represented by a union. Such cases may include examination complaints, work conditions, and disciplinary issues. The commission is made up of three members appointed by the chancellor with the advice and consent of the Board of Trustees, each of whom serves for a term of six years. Item 1B11 authorizes the chancellor to appoint Linda T. Chin as a commissioner of the CUNY Civil Service System for a prorated six-year term that begins September 8th, 2016 and expires May 31st, 2022. She is replacing Tilda Lamel, who has resigned after serving as commissioner since 1997. 
Ms. Chin, who received her JD from Brooklyn Law School, has been on the faculty of St. John's University in the Division of Criminal Justice and Legal Studies since 2006. Before that, she served as Special Counsel to the President and Dean of Faculty and Staff Relations at Hunter College. She has experience as a corporate attorney, in addition to serving as General Counsel to the New York State Judicial Commission on Minorities. She has a broad spectrum of community service that includes serving as Commissioner of the New York City Commission on the Status of Women. The appointment of Ms. Chin will enable the university to continue to operate under the rules and regulations of its Civil Service Commission as approved by the New York State Education Law and governed by the State Civil Service Law. Mr. Vice Chair, I present item 1B11 for the committee's consideration. A motion. Second. 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 Any comment, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is approved. Thank you. Item uh, 1B12, the Executive Vice Chancellor shall yes. present Peter yes. Rabinowitz. Yes. You were hiding. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> Thank you. Present, please. Yes, present. I would be delighted. I'm delighted to present uh, for your consideration the appointment of Professor Charles Mills as Distinguished Professor at the Graduate Center. Professor Mills is one of the world's most influential philosophers of race and one of the founders of critical race theory. His interests are broad, ranging from social and political philosophy ethics, Marxism, African-American philosophy, Caribbean-American philosophy, and, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and feminism. In addition to his widely acclaimed books, The Racial Contract, which received the Myers Outstanding Book Award from the Gustavus Myers Center for the Study of Bigotry and Human Rights in North America, and was nominated by Cornell University Press for the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award. Um, other books include Blackness Visible, Essays on Philosophy and Race, From Class to Race, Essays in White Marxism and Black Radicalism, Contract and Domination, and Radical Theory, Caribbean reality, race, class, and social domination. Professor Mills has published more than 75 scholarly articles and edited volumes and has participated in more than 130 conferences in the U.S. and abroad. <clears throat> his letters were uniformly superb. As one of his reviewers noted, Quote, there is no question that Mills is one of the leading figures in his subfields. He has staked out a formidable and original philosophical position that anyone working on questions of race must grapple with. He is prolific, wide-ranging, and intrepid. Another reviewer pointed out the question of Charles Mills' influence and reputation can only be answered in superlatives. <coughs> Since 2007, Professor Mills has served as the John Evans Professor of Moral and Intellectual Philosophy at Northwestern University. <coughs> From 1999 to 2007, Mills was a professor of philosophy at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where he joined the, uh, the philosophy faculty as assistant professor in 1990. He was also assistant professor at the University of Oklahoma from 1987 to 1990. He earned his doctoral and master's degrees in philosophy from the University of Toronto. The Graduate Center is thrilled with this prospective appointment. Um, Professor Mills had an offer from Yale University, but would like to teach at CUNY. Feels that um, he could make a difference here and he will fit well with us. So I recommend him to you with great enthusiasm. Call for vote on item IB12. So moved. A second. 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 <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now we're on Chancellor's report, university report, item C. And I request Vice Chancellor Waters to present the Chancellor's University report items. Thank you, Trustee Griffin. Number one, right? Um, I'm, I'm actually going to read these through as a group. Um, okay. As Chair Ferrer uh, mentioned, we are going to be looking at the process going forward. This is one of the changes that um, we are making for tonight. 
Section 1C identifies seven appointments of vice presidents and senior vice presidents at the college, at the colleges. With your approval, these appointments will appear in the Chancellor's University report that will be voted on by the board at its meeting on September 26th. They are 1C1, Mary Gorman, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Strategic Academic Initiatives at Baruch College. Ms. Gorman has more than 29 years in higher education administration, the last 15 of them at Baruch. She's currently serving as Interim Vice President for Enrollment Management and Strategic Academic Initiatives and is strongly recommended by the President to assume the permanent position. Item 1C2, Mary Arena Driscoll, Interim Senior Vice President and Provost at the City College of New York. Dr. Driscoll currently serves as the Interim Dean of Academic Affairs at CCNY and previously was the Dean of the School of Education. She has more than 20 years experience in teaching and education administration. Item 1C3, Stephen Titan, Vice President of Finance and Administration at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Mr. Titan brings more than 27 years of experience in finance, information technology, and human resources to the college. His previous experience includes serving as CFO and Senior Vice President for Finance for Health Insurance Plan, or HIP, of Greater New York. Item 1C4, James Lana, Interim Vice President of Enrollment Management at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Dr. Liana has 26 years of experience in academe. He currently holds the position of Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at John Jay. In his new title, he will be charged with executing the President's strategy for improving enrollment management at the college. Item 1C5, Reza Fakhari, Interim Vice President for Workforce Development and Strategic Community Partnerships at Kingsborough Community College. Dr. Fakhari has spent the past 11 years in academic affairs at Kingsborough, serving as both Associate Dean and Associate Provost. Under his direction, the college plans to create a new student union, an intercultural center, for which Dr. Fakari has received grant funding for programming. Item 1C6, Harriet Fain, Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Lehman College. Dr. Fain has more than 30 years of experience in higher education and is Lehman's longest serving dean. She is currently Dean of the School of Education and has provided strong leadership in the areas of teacher preparation and practitioner inquiry. Item 1C7, Sandra Palmer, Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs at Queensborough Community College. Dr. Palmer has been Dean of Faculty at Queensborough since 2015. Her 20 years of experience working with community college faculty and academic initiatives also includes serving as Provost at Manchester Com Community College and Chief Academic Officer at Naugatuck Valley Community College, both in Connecticut. I also want to bring to your attention item 1C8, the underlying faculty appointment of Mary Mallory as professor with immediate tenure with a waiver of section 6.2B of the bylaws. Ms. Mallory joined Brooklyn College as associate dean of libraries in July. At CUNY, all librarians hold faculty status and the library is considered an academic department. Since Dean Mallory will also serve as chair of Brooklyn's library department, CUNY's bylaws require that she be tenured. Dean Mallory did not hold faculty status at Montclair State where she worked before joining CUNY. It's therefore in the best interest of the college and the university to waive section 6.2B of the bylaws, granting Dr. Mallory an immediate tenure without having been previously tenured at another institution. Mr. Vice Chair, I present these Chancellor's University report items for the committee's approval. Including Dr. Mallory. Including Dr. Mallory. A motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you. So we have heard uh, <clears throat> Senior Vice Chancellor Schaefer. Right. And now we're, we're asking Chancellor Vice Chancellor Waters to present item 12B. Item 2B. I, item 2B. Item 2B is also an information item. It advises the committee of a faculty reappointment with early tenure at Mega Evers College in accordance with section 6.2C of the bylaws. This information item requires no action and will be included in the Chancellor's University report that will be voted on by the board on September 26th. No, 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 no vote is required. So the report of Vice Chancellor Waters is now on the line. <laughs> okay. Report. My report will be quite brief this evening. I wanted to um, just alert the committee that we will be changing some processes so things might be different um, as we go forward. Uh, we will see how, how that works. 
Uh, I also wanted to just uh, remind you or update you that um, we did sign the collective bargaining agreement, as you know, and my office has been working diligently with the um, controller's office as well as the city office of payroll administration. Um, we've established dates where we can have possible payouts, um, but there are also non-economic terms of the um, collective bargaining agreement that my office is working to implement, so, two of which you voted on tonight, which were the establishment of titles and excluded positions. And we will be presenting more reports to this committee as we go forward. So um, we look forward to an exciting academic year. And I thank you all. Hey, That's it. It is appropriate at this time to ask for a motion to adjourn, unless there's any good welfare, which we'd be glad to hear. Well, just one yes. question came up from the faculty about the change. Oh, uh, so please ask the question. That's what I would like to do. And I'll keep it brief. Okay? Take all the time you need. The question, the question that came up at the uh, UFS Executive Committee meeting was that now that these appointments, that for example, that we used to have people introduced at the table, mm -hmm. that will change, and so therefore we will only learn of search committee results in the Chancellor's University report after they have been made by the president, right? After they have been submitted for approval for the full board meeting? I, we, we still don't. I mean, I think that this is an evolving process. We're evaluating the best way to put these these um, positions forward, to, to put these approvals forward. So they may still appear in the agenda. We're still working that out. OK. All right. The question that came up is that in some campuses, it was actually discussed that faculty are not being uh, apprised of appointments as they're being made. And we only learn of them after the fact. So. If there was a mechanism by which uh, presidents and um, human resources would be helpful in this, whereby we were alerted in some way about these uh, key appointments at campus as vice presidents uh, really influence academic life quite a bit. So um, that's that was, I'm just letting you know what. I, and I appreciate that, and we'll take that under consideration. I think the whole idea of communication with the campus about an appointment of a vice president is something that should be very transparent. So right. there may be other ways of doing it that don't necessarily include the committee, but we'll certainly look at that and encourage um, okay. the campuses to Thank do you. That. Okay. May I just add that um, uh, on some campuses, uh, certainly on mine, uh, any vice presidential appointment, um, the search committee is comprised of the full community, including, at least at, at my place, uh, faculty, and specifically, we do ask faculty governance to recommend someone onto the committee. Mm -hmm. And so at the conclusion of that, right. we report back to faculty governance what has happened, even before mm -hmm. it comes here, even though we say it still has to be approved <laughs> by the trustees. And that's an admirable process. Oh. Okay. That's an admirable process, mm -hmm. but I, it, it's not consistent across okay. Okay. all the units. Okay. That's all. Right. That was my only. That was our only concern. I think that okay. was a good question, a good discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll you want a motion that. to adjourn? <laughs> Please. <laughs> motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.